channel. My name is D2. With me is Kaldi. We are not the Chinese catchers on the screen that you see. I do believe that is Montage on the left, by the way, a popular Chinese streamer. In any case, we are going to be having our fifth match of the day between Dog and Kimmy coming up next. Kimmy, obviously, at 0 and 2 after losing twice versus Tyson Braros, whereas Dog is at 1 and 1 after his thrilling loss versus Tice and his win versus Braros. So we're going to take a look at those decks right now and uh, let's see what we have for us in store in store for us today and it uh, looks like it's going to be a mech sh type of, well not really a mech shaman it's going to be a mid-range shaman i saw those noise i saw the noise got a little little bit confused there but uh yeah more mid-rangey with that dr boom and the uh and the uh alec here in there did you get a chance to take or did you i am stumbling over my words today sorry about that guys uh Kaldi, did you get a chance to look at the paladin and the druid i did not but let's let's look at the uh kimmy stacks here we're looking at another mid-range uh, shaman looking at the shulok and we're looking at the what looks to be a very okay this is temple, to be mage. temple mates with water elementals very interesting right yeah uh, but to talk about elementals. yeah be before though uh it was very interesting to see the what i would consider ancestral healing in, in shaman which is not something you see every day but yesterday we had a scenario where chao shen was automatically eliminated uh for game number five mm -hmm. but in this case though kim is not out of it he right. did win two games in both of his matches against Tyson and Braros. so if kimmy beats doc and uh and ties beats Braros, then kimmy could possibly advance in a three-way tie so there is still merit for him to play and keep keep going as, as i mean doc isn't through and Braros isn't through it's gonna be very tough but he at least has a strong tiebreaker here yeah, definitely. Uh, that said, we do have three twos for everyone who has played so far, so it's going to be taking, obviously, a different score for any of these players to escape, uh, you know, having the tiebreaker go all the way to, you know, basically tossing a coin uh, in the end, which is the last tiebreaker, if you're not aware, guys. Uh, it basically goes down to game difference, then the amount of games won, and then after that, head-to-head uh, -head record. And uh, if there's a three-way tie in that situation as well, then we actually do a drawing of lots to see who will eventually take it. In any case, we are going to be getting into this game right away. And uh, Dog with the Paladin, Kimmy with the Zoo Lock here. And uh, typically this favors the Paladin if they're playing Secret Paladin, but this could be a mid-range version. The only thing I see in his hand that indicates that it is uh, Secret Paladin would be that Hana Creeper. But uh, what do you think here, Kali? I think... It's, it's looking like, to me at least, kind of like a mid-range paladin. It seems to me, me to be like that. Uh, but yeah, it's it's about as as good as it gets here for the uh, for the paladin. Close to perfection. Kills the uh, flame in the beginning with the mini bot. Has the method to follow it up. Even as a cog hammer now. So the Im Gangbusters challenge this, but there's no four drop here for Kimmy. So if he has to tap and play a two drop. Whereas if Dog can just <clears throat> turn that around, kills on the Creeper now. I think I'm really liking Dog's position here. Also on top of that, he has the Consecrate in his deck, whereas the uh, Zulog generally doesn't have AoE. Right, that's typically the Zulog that can't afford to run any sort of Hellfire. Though we did say that, see that early in the day. But uh, yeah, like you say, basically they rely on minion to minion combat to do their dirty work for them and clear the board. In this situation, Kimmy finds himself a bit behind though. Uh, he is in an okay spot considering that he has the M King boss to start developing those 1-1s one for him. Let's see what Dog can do to mitigate uh, the pressure from the M King boss. And then uh, the Keeper of Ultiman is pretty good in this situation. It really is, yeah. Um... It's also strong in the late game. It's a versatile card. It's probably my favorite card of the expansion so far. I'm looking forward to Murgleton, but you know, Ultaman just seems exactly what Paladin needed. Not that they were struggling before, but with Ultaman on top of it, just really, I think there's no doubt that Paladin is the strongest class right now. Yeah, absolutely. Just so many things in its arsenal to be able to combat whatever is thrown its way. That's why you see it so much 
uh, on the ladder these days, dominating in that aspect, and uh, not even just the Secret Paladin, the Midrange Paladin is strong as well. I think we're getting closer and closer to being able to uh, say that this is that Midrange Paladin, considering uh, we haven't seen any secrets thus far. The only strange thing so far is that Haunted Creeper, but uh, maybe just looking to be able to uh, deal with aggro a bit better. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's sometimes wrong. I actually, what do you think about double uh, abusive and going for the uh, juggler there. I felt the juggler wasn't going to get a better chance than, than this turn right here. Maybe Kimmy's going to be a bit greedy and uh, wait for that implosion later on that could be very, very powerful in the future. But, uh, I mean, the Lothib does contest the board pretty well, so it's kind of an okay situation right now. Uh, however, Dog does have a way to kill it with a 3-1 and a 2-1 and play his own Sludge Belcher to basically take control of the board. So, yeah, you could be right in a sense, but Dog doesn't go for it. goes for the... Uh, call camera gets an okay, uh, an okay land on that uh, haunted creeper. For what me, at least, what I was thinking in terms of it, if he went for it last turn, he gets four juggles guaranteed, mm. and he also there's three minions with one health that would be good to juggle against. But now, I mean, we might see a he... lot of juggles from both sides actually right here, uh, and I don't know if Kimmy wants to. Well, it looks like he's going to develop the. Uh, the Night Juggler and the Void Walker. I can't. Oh, actually, pops it right Oof, away. And he kills the opponent's. Wow. Okay, these knives are going to be all here. over the place. Hits the Knife Juggler. Knives coming back. Hits Dog in the misses. face. Wow. Oh, misses. Wow. Misses again. Wow, that is very <laughs> unfortunate for Kimmy in that situation. And they're going to see if he can't just get him. Wow. Oh, misses again. This the third is miss here, absolutely bro. ridiculous. Throws out the well played. That is well very well played. But uh, not. Not very well played by that knife juggler, unfortunately. Finally gets a 1-1. One, one. Can't even snip, snipe off the 2-1 mini bot. Dog here just laughing. I mean, Kimmy... I feel, I feel so bad for him. He was behind before, but this was just his turn to get back into this. And this is just going to fall apart here so quickly. Hits with a juggle. Yeah, the dog's, dog's the... <laughs> juggler is on point. But uh, fortunately, Kimmy's is not... Looks like we're probably going to see everything going to the face after this, and all of a sudden, Kimmy's at 12 health. How did this happen? Even oh, God, Mount this is the worst mini, and yeah. Kimmy's almost just out of their stance. Uh, but, oof. Wow. Yeah, Kimmy is just devastated right now. Throws away the Mulganis because he has to get back on the board here. I feel like he has to tap unless he's dead on board. He's not dead on board, is he? 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Oh, he is dead on board if he does tap. Okay. So, yeah, this is looking pretty over because Kimmy can't even tap at this point. Nope. Sadly, he cannot. And this is looking close to lethal. Okay, let's say, yeah, Consecrate yeah. now. It's definitely Consecrate lethal. Would be le is lethal, yeah. Dog, dog taking game by one here. Looking to be in a, a good position to advance. Has the Shaman the Druid left? Both players have the Shaman left though, a mid-range type of Shaman. I actually feel like Kimmy is in a better position to get the win with the Shaman, because Dog has the Druid, and the, the Shaman is generally supposed to be good against the Druid, but with the Darnassus on top of it, it's, it's looking better and better. Right, yeah, Druid, the, Druid. Druid does a lot better these days against Shaman than it used to. Uh, if you guys aren't aware of the history of how uh, the matchups work back in the day. Shaman was considered a counter to Druid, but nowadays ha Druid having improved over the several expansions that's gone through, where Shaman hasn't really gotten that much stronger. Uh, it's gone to, to be a much more even matchup. We aren't going to get that matchup right away. Uh, we're actually going to be seeing Dog's Druid go against Kimmy's Zulok once more, and this is a favored matchup for the Zulok. It is. Uh, now, I think the egg is okay to keep. But Kimmy decides he wants to one drop over everything else. Gets a decent hand though. Power bombing is, is really, really, really strong. Now, it just comes down to the Druid hand generally. And, and if the Warlock falls completely flat, that can have an effect. But yeah, <laughs> innovate, wow. Darnassus, and he has everything. Wow. I feel like a dog can't, can't, you know, can't get a bad beat today. I mean,. <sighs> This is absolutely amazing for a dog. He's going to be able to innovate into a Sludge Belcher, most likely. Uh, yeah, that could mean, be the Druid Claw the... as well to play around Power Overwhelming. But yeah, it looks like he is going to go for the Druid Claw to play around Power Overwhelming just a bit. But um, Kimmy can potentially deal with that if he uses Knife Juggler or the Abusive Sergeant. We'll see what he goes for. But um, regardless, I mean, dog is just having a really good start right now. It has to be. 
I kind of feel like he actually has to go for the juggler just to get that chance. I mean, well, we know he, that he just keep, we know Kimmy's can... juggler just likes to go face, right? <laughs> I mean, Kimmy's juggler <laughs> hates getting the right target. That is the most smart juggler. Yeah. But, but uh, now, 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 Kimmy, Kimmy is behind, and he needs to take a chance. I feel yeah, it is safer absolutely. to go for the abusive, but I think it's it's not the winning play. The scenario where, where Kimmy is winning with being this far behind, I think, is with the with the juggler. Uh, but he decides to play it safe. Faith, yeah, <laughs> just decides to go for the safe play and clear, guaranteed. But gets the weaker minion on board with that abusive sergeant, and obviously doesn't play on curve as well. Dog does have the wild girl to be able to curve into his further plays down the road. But um, still, I mean, what can Kimmy do to come back here? He could play the the uh, implosion on curve here. Uh, he could also go for the knife juggler with the Honda Creeper to get, try to get the juggler, the juggle, excuse me. But yeah, with with Kimmy's luck, I, I guess yeah. you just go for the safe play with Kimmy's luck. I want to say again, this is again where he doesn't take the risk. If he had gone for the juggler, it's a 50 50 chance that he can kill. The uh, Darnassus and having the implosion left with the juggler on board. Yeah, this is just. I think he should be taking more risks, honestly. If you're behind, you take risks. If you're ahead, you can play safe. This is not something Kimmy is really embodying here. Right, and uh, this Doom Guard is pretty nice for Kimmy. Obviously, he has to you know throw away two cards and able to use it, but it is a huge, it's a pretty big tempo swing. Dog Force sees a swipe to clear it up, but uh, that leaves Kimmy with only one card in hand. Obviously, that's something that can be remedied if you're the zoo because of that hero power, but uh, from here on out, going to be hurting himself just to be able to stay in the game. I mean, this is an area where you want to have three minions on board, you want to have your opponent at like 20 health and be hitting for five or six per turn. Having him struggle to get back into it, just one in gang boss is not enough. And right. And then be looking at probably uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> ancient of war. I mean, what what can he do here? Ancient of war quite a bit bigger than the in king boss, unfortunately for Kimmy. <laughs> uh, does pick up the doom guard, but um, no void caller to be able to get that out without discarding, unless he just plays his entire hand right here. I don't know. Yeah, I think it has to be the juggler this turn. Yeah, just play both inking bosses. It's a pretty annoying board for Dog to deal with. Obviously, he has the bigger minion here, but you know it's kind of annoying for him to start dealing with his inking bosses. We could see him go to face, though. However, uh, just to sidestep this altogether. Absolutely. Here now, he has the keeper and he has the jewel to the claw. I think keeper is really strong here. I think he can afford also <laughs> to save the uh, big game hunter. Right. Yeah, I mean, one thing to consider about the Keeper is that, you know, maybe your opponent makes some huge Void uh, Terror, but he does have the BGH to be able to take out anything too big. And so I kind of like using the uh, Keeper here. I would like to see Dog go face, honestly. Just because it puts so much pressure on his opponent. I mean, he doesn't have any combo, so there's no rush really for him. Uh, there is a bigger chance for Kimmy to come back on board if he doesn't trade. This also doesn't give him any value out of the hero power, but I mean it's it's a tough call. I, I feel like yeah, if you dog an vision, you can play safe. If you are behind, you could maybe go for something like the big game and try to get yeah. lethal. But the thing is, you've if, already seen one. Uh, you've seen a power overwhelming. You've seen an abusive sergeant, and you've seen a doom guard. Obviously, we see two more of those cards in the hand of Kimmy, and a really bad draw with the smell Ganis. I might have to discard this once more, but. Yeah, you've seen a lot of ways to buff up creatures, so maybe, I mean, Dog, just putting on the pressure, I kind of like it. But, uh, yeah, actually, Kimmy is going to have to throw all three creatures into here. He's going to be left with two Imps, as well as a 5-2 Doom Guard, and uh, a heavy price to get through this Ancient of War. Dog is in the driver's seat, absolutely. Even picks up the Living Roots to deal with that Doom Guard pretty easily. And uh, would you even charge face with the Jewel of the Claw here? I don't think you need to, uh, and uh, there's no reason to do that. I think you don't need to be in a hurry to finish this off. I mean, dog. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Maybe yeah, streaming later, play but safe yeah. Here. yeah, just clear out the board. Play it. Oh, he is gonna go face. Never mind. Just kidding. Uh, yeah, I mean, it is a lot of damage, and it basically mitigates the hero power from the warlock. Not able to, you know, use the hero power very much more at all. And he's also seen Malgana, so there's not much that you know Kimi can do here. And the owl shows up to add initial to injury here. The turn after the ancient award dies. This is comical, honestly, that this is happening. Now it's Joseph. 
Yeah, silencing charge doesn't really help when it's already on the board, unfortunately. And uh, we might even see lethal here if he draws the right card. Is that lethal? Uh, yeah, it is lethal, is, actually. Uh, yeah, because he's six from six damage from the Drew of the Claw. Just use your face. There's, and... there's, there's, there's three taunts on three attacks. Oh, right, right. I totally did not see that. I totally just blanked on that uh, Void uh, Walker on the left side. I'm sorry. But, it's not golden, so yeah. It's, yeah, it it's wasn't. It goes. wasn't shiny and sparkling like the other two. Minutes. I'm sorry <laughs> about that, but uh, yeah, just blanking here. I just want. I'm just bloodthirsty, Kaldi. I just want to go face and finish this game. I don't blame you. <laughs> so no Malganis to come back from here. Void Walker. <laughs> yeah, Void Walker. It's not going to help too much. This Doctor Boom. If they were all taunts, maybe. But yeah, that's going to be it. Kimmy just with. Such horrible, I mean, just the draws and the rolls on everything that's happened to him today. Uh, it's just been Still, just a like, disaster. I feel like he had two options to get back ahead in this game mm -hmm. with the juggles hitting. One of them was a 1-3, in three. one of them was a 50% uh, chance. He took neither of them and he didn't take the risks and he just stayed behind. And you'd have to take risks if you wanna if you are behind and you wanna get back into the game. You can't just be playing middle of the way and playing safe. If you play safe, you generally don't win if you're behind. You just kind of uh, keep the position you have already. So mm. yeah, I mean he did get a rough rough uh, I mean dog's hand was just completely amazing, but Kimi didn't take the chances needed. Yeah, definitely. I definitely have to uh, echo that sentiment that you have there. I mean, if it's not your day, it's not your day. You kind of have to take a risk a certain, at a certain point, though. I mean, if you miss the juggles, if you miss the, you know, the implosions, uh, if you miss all those things, then you know maybe it just isn't your day. But I think you kind of have to go for it. Otherwise, you're consigning yourself to just losing slower in that position. But uh, we are actually, going to... uh, sorry, go ahead. I, I actually had a scenario yesterday. I was playing against Uber JJ where I had. I was playing two against Control Warrior, and I had my whole board brawled on turn five. Uh, and in that case, three turns later, I had a chance to potentially play around big game and play safe, or go for a 12 12 uh, uh, Void Terror because I had two power bombs in hand. Mm -hmm. But anyhow, I, I did end up going for the Void Terror because I felt I was so far behind that the only scenario that I was going to be winning was if my Void Walkers could keep this Void Terror alive. And it did end up getting big amount of, but I, I still, again, even you know, being in the same position again, I would again go for the same, uh, same decision. But now the totem golem into the haunted creeper. This is so strong. I wonder if he goes for the power bombing or what here. Dark peddler coming up for Kimmy. Oof. Yeah, Kimmy going a bit all in there with the the one drop into one drop hoping he drew a two drop uh, dark peddler one turn too late unfortunately for him and yeah this this totem golem is going to start you know commanding the board right now however the m king boss is a really nice pickup here can be able to trade back into that that um, totem golem and now yeah, i think kind he, of an awkward yeah. spot here am i crazy enough to consider a hex on the m king boss yeah, I think it might I be a little know. bit too early for that. Actually, Dog doesn't clear the 1-1. One, one. Instead, clears uh, the 2-1 in order to get both of his Spectral Spiders out. Uh, really interesting play. Uh, wanting to wanting more damage onto the field there. Maybe he hopes that his opponent will trade for, into him. Also has that Lightning Storm, but if he commits to the Lightning Storm this coming turn, then he obviously won't be able to play the Fire Elemental on the following turn after that. So, uh, going to be a difficult set of decisions for Dog. Obviously, depends on the card that he gets in the next turn as well. Yeah, it looks like he probably went for the Mortal Coil, I would have thought. Right? Yeah, it looks like he does yeah. go for the Mortal Coil. Uh, might as well draw a card here. I mean, the, uh, the Taunt isn't the greatest here as well. Uh, so you might as well just draw deep into your deck, which is usually better than the options that you have in that situation. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was almost like a, a Undercity Valiant here, but he also drew a card, you know. Wow. Not too bad here. Yeah, that that is an amazing top deck for Dog, though. Getting that Azure Drake, obviously it's not a mech, so it doesn't really help too much with regard to the power mace, but doesn't need has something to play, a, a strong minion to draw a card and get onto the field, and he's able to play his Fire Elemental next turn. Yeah, I like uh, Kimmy's decision of not going for the power mace here. I think it's not, it's not time yet. Uh, 
Now, Dog has options though, for sure. It has the fire elemental. How is he gonna play this out mm. though? I think yeah, he, I think he has to just end up killing this hazard deck. But that leaves Kimmy with the option to just power up the the imp and and get a lot of things done here. Yeah, definitely. Tough decision for Dog here. I mean, I wouldn't blame him for just killing the imp and hitting the face with the azurgic, especially with that uh, both the. Uh, Fire Elemental and the Lightning Storm in hand to be able to deal with something in the future or deal with future minions in the future for uh, Kimmy. But um, yeah, really tough. Obviously, you don't want to be throwing away your Ezra Drake for nothing. You want to be forcing your opponent to deal with it because it usually is such a huge threat. Looks like Dog having some issues uh, with the lag and. Uh, Oh, it looks like he actually did pick up a Sludge Belter that we couldn't see in his hand in the previous turn. Obviously picked that up with the Azure Drake, so I'm going to go for that rather than going for the Fire Elemental. Even though it's off curve, he realizes that uh, this gives, this prevents the Lotha from getting a good trade on board, and maybe he can finish it off with the Fire Elemental. Doesn't want to give up that, that Drake just yet. I actually think that Owl here would be very strong on the Belcher. The Owl, the Belcher, you can kill the Azure Drake as well. And... But leave you with a lot of options. You could go Owl, Power Warming, and Egg. That's what I would have done in this situation. But Kimmy may have not thought this completely through. Now the follow-up has to be Implosion on the 1-2. But I felt like mm -hmm. killing the 1-2 with the Implosion isn't the strongest, because it also leaves you vulnerable to Lightning Storm. Yeah, and you really can't afford to go for Implosion onto the Azure. I guess he, you know, he could go for Implosion, uh... On the Ezra Drake right now, but that would involve potential. Oh, it even gets the four, so uh, interesting. So he's able to clear up this board in that in this situation. Uh, didn't go for the implosion on the Ezra Drake. Didn't deem it um, safe enough. But uh, yeah, had he gone for that, he would have had to use the owl in order to finish that off potentially. Doesn't go for it in the end. Dog now has the ability to go for lightning storm, but if he does do that, that's basically his entire turn. He could also possibly heal, but I think to talk about risk and when to take risk, Kimi in this game was in no position. He, he was even, at least maybe even slightly ahead, so he didn't need to take a big risk by, you know, imploding the Azure Drake. There was no need to do that. He could just as well, you know, implode in the 1-2. But if he had been way behind, he may have needed to go for something like that and save the power warming. Yeah, definitely. So it looks like Dog is going to go for the Lightning Storm. Guarantees kills his entire board. Uh, doesn't commit to the Healing Wave. Wants to uh, develop the board a bit with that Totem as well. Um, he could have gone for the Fire Elemental to kill off the Lothab. Uh, the four one one Imps weren't too scary, I don't believe. But instead decides to go for the Lightning Storm. And now Dog left with only six mana. Again, going to have a pretty empty turn. Likely going to just be a hex and totem, I believe. That is true. Yeah. Um, it's just, I think Kimmy is is ahead here, to be sure. But I think another thing to mention is the map score. And now, if Kimmy wins this three to two, that probably won't be a good enough map score to win a three way tie. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't think so. Even though he has seven wins, he also has eight losses and seven eight. It's not the best score. He would have yeah. needed, I think, a three one or something here, but. You, of course, you never give up and you keep going. Beating Dog here on, on TV would be a great start to, to Kimmy's career. Yeah, definitely. Um, obviously playing for a bit of pride, if not for the very outside chance of getting into the final eight. But yeah, every single game put, could potentially matter, so he's going to keep playing it out. And uh, Dog eventually has to go for the Totem and the Hex, keeping with his plan of not using the Healing Wave until uh, it's absolutely necessary. And now he's finally going to be able to use all of his mana next turn. We'll see how he ends up using it. And Kimmy, having seen that Lightning Storm earlier, going to flood up the board. Mm -hmm. One thing I want to mention, I probably would like to see the Imp Gang Boss on the left. Because it, it, the same right. idea behind we were talking about the Shaman yesterday, you want to get the 1-1 one, one token to be possibly buffed. I mean, there's only the Sweater possibly to buff it, but we have the Void Caller... He can force out the uh, Doom Guard potentially. Right. Forcing out the the other Void Caller isn't too bad either. Um, and obviously, it's kind of a risk whether whether you tap right now or not because you could get a weaker Demon as well. So mm -hmm. risks kind of abound in this situation. Looks like Kimmy's going to stick to his plan of playing extremely safe and guaranteeing oh. that he gets out the Doom Guard. And 
and uh, yeah, that's gonna come out here. No hex for dog, obviously, because he used it already. Let's see where these boom bots land. Goes to the face. Kimmy just with, just can't not buy a break in this situation. And uh, gonna play the owl as well, realizing that there's not many things to silence. Dog kind of scratching his head, not in a great position, but uh, Kimmy finally taking complete control here. Yeah, I mean he's he's not worried about the uh, the storm because he has both the seven health minion and the uh, and the egg in this this position here. I mean there is the possible merit to skipping the owl oh. and tapping, but he doesn't get the heal. Of only heals for, I believe it's eight, and so he has the fire elemental, but it's not going to be enough. Yeah, I think it's seven or fourteen, which is kind of a strange number, right? But oh yeah, yeah, it's got to be different, right? You know, if Paladin healing for six and Druid for eight, yeah, I'm gonna put it at seven. All right, so let's see what Kimi picks up here. Is that lethal? That's going to be two damage off, unfortunately for him. Can play the Void Terra and the Doom Guard here, which is kind of nice. Uh, can get a three five and a four four if he decides to eat the egg in the situation. And uh, yeah, gonna... yeah, I mean, without without elemental destruction, I don't see Dog really making the comeback here. Now, now Kimmy is playing safe, and he is way ahead, and he can afford to. But he may want to be a bit careful in case there's going to be another uh, potential lightning storm. There could be elemental destruction; it's very unlikely from Dog from Kimmy's, Kimmy's position. But obviously, we know that there is none for Dog. Right. The the one issue here is that Kimmy. Kind of wants to get this void, uh, or sorry, this doom guard out in the field, so he can't actually attack with the imking boss until uh, he gets that out there. Looks like he's not even going to attack with it at all into that pile of shredder. Wants yeah. to get that. If he's going to attack, he wants to get that imp right. He doesn't want to uh, just throw that ability away. And now dog completely on the back foot. Such a huge board for him to contend with right now. And I don't imagine he has a way to get himself out of this. Has the rock biter, which he can use on the shredder. To kill that the bigger doom guard, but yeah, it didn't wouldn't matter in the end. Dog is going to concede, and Kimmy bringing it back to a one game to two score, finally winning with his Zulok. Kimmy now with his shaman and mage left, and uh, interesting enough, if we do see a shaman mirror, it will be mid range versus mid range, not the aggro that we're used to. Absolutely, here yeah, Kimmy taking the first win in this series. More rocket sharks here inbound. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, he will need to beat this Shaman three times. He's already taken the first step to that. But he will also need to win the Shaman Mirror. And we're going to have that right up here. Golden Shaman versus non-Golden Shaman. Oh, it feels bad, man. Mm -hmm. It really uh, does. I th Dog's deck, if I remember correctly, does have a bit more late game. Whereas mm -hmm. Kimmy's deck has the Bloodlust. So uh, going to be imperative for both sides to get the board... Obviously, Kimmy wanting to finish the game out using that Bloodlust, whereas Dog just wants to prevent that from happening and just basically control things and make sure that uh, he can use his board advantage to seal out the win. Now, he's playing the Dual Scarab. I think that's really cool. I was playing some Shaman with Dual Scarab yesterday, and, and, and they actually get a big game hunter uh, out of it. It's just a really strong card, the Dual Scarab. Because the Shaman 3 drops are so strong. You have Hex. Mm -hmm. You have Lightning Storm, for example, what about you have Feral Spirits, <laughs> or Farsight, yeah, but the, <laughs> uh, the uh, Harvest Column, you know, the old Doctor 3. The, the old Doctor picture. 3. So yeah, mm -hmm. interesting thing in this matchup so far is that uh, Dog immediately decided to use the Rock Biter weapon to clear out Kimmy's Tunnel Trug, and uh, really interesting to see how Dog kind of approaches this, especially because Dog obviously doesn't know what kind of deck that Kimmy is running. So seeing this Jeweled Scarab and now seeing this uh, Tuscar Totemic, you know, maybe he's starting to get, get a better idea of what kind of deck uh, Kimmy is running, but overall, it's going to be difficult to sniff this one out. Yeah, no question about it. I mean, Doc has seen nothing but extreme aggression here uh, far today. <laughs> out, of, out, of, out of the shamans, out of the Chinese shamans, so it's maybe safe for him to assume that this might potentially be an acro shaman. But now it's looking pretty clear that this is going to be a mid-range. I would have thought from Kimmy if I was Doc. But now you can't clear with the storm, but it needs, I think, definitely a better uh, board yeah. for that. What okay. about just Lothep? Yeah, Lothep is pretty strong here, but uh, looking at the board, um, typically you have some buffs from the Shaman. Obviously, there's that Flame Tongue Totem, which can be part of ma problematic, but uh, typically you don't see as many buffs as you do in the zoo, so a lot of times this Sludge Belcher does 
possibly a better job than Lothab of dealing with the board. Obviously, you can't. It's it doesn't trade up as well. But uh, Dog taking a bit of a risk here, hoping that his Sludge Belcher can do the work. That's true here. Uh, I guess here yeah, we saw the bane of the shaman. The, really, the problem was the were the flame tongue totems that just sat in the hand again and again, because the, uh, the players kept trading into the shaman and the uh, totems just were so awkward when that happened. Uh, now I kind of like the spider tank here. Yeah. Yeah, both the Spider Tank and the Harvest Golem coming off those Jewel Scarabs, showing the power of that card, and uh, coming up, you know, kind of a turn late, but still pretty strong here. As for Dog, can play the Lothab here, uh, has some other options with the Flame Tongue Totem and the uh, Haunted Creeper. Looks like he's going to forego the Lothab right now, and just play out a Totem plus the Haunted Creeper. You know, Shaman can be pretty difficult to play in this situation, just because, um, you know... It's hard to know when to maximize your hero power, hard to know when to go for, you know, the tempo play, especially because Shaman is notorious for running out of cards pretty quickly. And uh, I'm sure, I mean, I'm not sure how much Dog has played Shaman on the ladder. It's not something you'd want to play if you want if you want to rank up super high. So uh, going to be difficult for both of these players to navigate this deck since, you know, obviously it hasn't been something that's been seen in the meta very recently, it's particularly these mid-range decks. Now, Kimmy is definitely playing more aggressive here, uh, and, and Dog seems to be playing more for the late game, and I like Dog's point of view, because he's thinking, okay, I have the storm, if I'm really far ahead on board, my storm won't be good, if I'm a bit behind and playing more for the late game, it'll be a better scenario for me, so I'm going to just sit back and, and get a lot of value through this and win this in the late game, because there is no huge burst wave coming here, um, I really do respect that. Yeah, absolutely. Playing to his hand, making sure that he makes the right play here, uh, but has a pretty awkward turn, and uh, this is one of the, the difficulties of Shaman, right? So one of the best ways that you can draw a card is using this Magi Totem, which oftentimes is basically just draw a card and heal for three. And mm -hmm. yeah, in, case, in this case, it might be a heal for five, which is kind of nice, but not what you want to be getting out of a card that you stick in your deck. It's a very important turn off for Kim. He has to use the totem. There's there's no no other way around it. I think Haunted Creeper Totem is probably stronger. But yeah. Yeah, he could go for either, could go for double totem here. Uh yeah, it looks like he's gonna go for the Haunted Creeper, which is a bit more annoying for Dog to deal with. And uh we're kind of on bloodlust watch here, right? I mean, on the one hand, mm -hmm. Dog wants to be continually clearing the board of Kimmy, and obviously he needs the card quality to be, to be able to do that, but on the side of Kimmy, if he can draw that Bloodlust, he can do a lot of damage to his opponent and potentially seal the game. I mean, with Hex here though, there is the potential to just clear a lot of this stuff. Mm. Hex plus Storm, you could also look at something like uh, Lothep plus one Flame Tongue Totem, killing the Lothep. So you have your own Lothep and, and you're just <coughs> facing the three small minions here from Kimmy. Yeah, definitely both solid plays. Obviously, there's uh, risk in both of them. You're playing the, sh the Hex here, if your opponent just you know follows up with the Doctor Broom, you feel pretty bad about that. And obviously, if you play the uh, Lothab and play the Flame Tongue Totem, sure, you get a good trade on the Lothab, but then uh, your opponent just kills your Flame Totem for free, quote-unquote. But uh, yeah, I do kind of like that the latter play that you suggested. Um, even if your Flame Tongue Totem gets you know killed, that's kind of its purpose, right? You get its value in, and then you go from there. But it looks like he's not wanting to commit the Lothab. I'm a bit surprised by this. I guess he feels like since it's his only minion in hand, he wants to get the maximum value out of it. Oh, this is a strong wow. play too, though. Oof. Yeah, clears the entire board except for the Lothab. And uh, the Lothip is capable of, you know, just killing off that Flame Tongue Totem again for pretty much free. Only only thing he's losing is the opportunity to cost to go face. But, yeah, just kind of uh, playing really conservative is Dog, whereas Timmy realizes he's the more aggressive deck, the more the deck that needs to be the beatdown and put the aggression on. So he's committing more to the board, only leaving behind that big game hunter for, you know, potential kill on a Dr. Boom or Neptulon. I mean, yeah, Kimmy has just been committing more to the board, and now he's kind of all in on this board here, winning him the game, and it's looking unlikely at this point. I mean, Dog can just commit two totems from hand and one totem with the hero power, and clear at least the low step. The healing totem is really strong for Kimmy, but... Okay, what about 
Klemtong totem and hex. Is that a possibility? You leave him only with the totem golem, and you have your own one two. Yeah, I think Dog with the play last turn, he's kind of committing to not hexing this this Lothab, just because he feels like he doesn't have any answers for anything huge that could come out of Takimi's deck. So I imagine he might kill the Lothab the hard way using this Plain Tongue Totem, and uh, maybe just put down his own Totem Golem to rival his opponent's board. That is true here. Uh, I think Dog is ahead, though, in this game. I, I think he's been playing slightly greedy, and that's what he needs to do in these mirrored matchups. In Shaman versus Shaman, but yeah, if you were playing Hunter versus Hunter, for example, things would just fall apart. But yeah, I think he just may have made a mistake. I mean, hero powering over hexing here, I really don't respect that. Hmm. Yeah, so let's see how aggressive Kimmy gets here. He could use a, an, a lightning storm just to. And look, yeah, look at Dog's face. It looks like he's uh, pretty upset by that, by that play, realizing that he's not going to be able to. Or he's not getting much done with his play. Uh, yeah, so Kimi not going to commit to Lightning Storm, obviously, you're only killing totems, and so we're just going to start pushing damage to face rather than, you know, killing off these totems. All realizes that the only thing that can buff these up from now on is maybe a Thunder Buff Valiant, which is hard to fit in the deck, and uh, something like a Defender of Argus, since he's seen both Lightning Storm totems, but... Yeah, I mean, Dog's on the back foot, and looks like he's not up not happy with his play thus far. I mean, everything... Seems on point except the last hex, and now he wow. gets it. That yeah. is very painful. He had three turns that he could have hexed that and finally commits to it. Also, the Lothab, he could have played for so many turns now and finally picks this turn to do it. I think the Lothab turn now is, I think, saving Lothab until now is strong. Uh, but it just comes down, he also skipped the, uh, the zombie child. That's interesting to me. Yeah, I guess he doesn't want to give a free attack on from the. Uh, totem Golem onto a Zombie Child, especially because he doesn't have anything to follow up to kill on that uh, Totem Golem, something like the flip, uh, excuse me, the Fire Elemental. Dr. Boom is a pretty good pickup for Dog, however, it is going to be challenged by this big game hunter, but you know, that said, those Boom Bots are bigger than anything that we see on the side of Kimmy other than that Totem Golem, so it's still okay. I mean, if you, if you look at Urshock on, on, on Lothep, Lightning Storm, and then big game hunter, it's looking good for Kimmy now. So do you, may have been do you lightning storm this board? Obviously, I was mentioning it earlier with just a board of totems just to push damage to face, but uh, do you commit to the lightning storm here when maybe you could see something bigger in the future? I think you have to. It's now or never, really. Uh, this, this, you know, there's six million is on the board. Uh, it's crucial you go for the Earthshock first, though, on the Lothab. You get two bombs on yourself, but it's just... So much worth it. It's so, so worth it here. If the Totem Golem survives, it's worth it. If, if not, then yeah, things wow. tend to fall apart a bit. Yeah, but so it, it looks... the bombs here will be crucial. Yeah, it's going to go for it. Let's see where these bombs land. It's the frog and the totem. Ooh. Very good for Kimmy. Only clears a couple of minions that are pretty insignificant to him in the long run. And Dog obviously cannot be happy about that. Does have the healing wave, but it's a pretty dead card other than just keeping him... Uh, from dying in the next few turns. Let's see what he does here. He can use that Rock Biter to clear out the Big Game Hunter and uh, can actually just play his whole hand out here. I imagine you just play the Healing Wave right now anyway. There's no reason not to. Not going to see anything like Alex Straza anyway. He may be looking to possibly heal a minion with the Healing Wave. Oh, right, right. Yeah, that's Something true. to consider. Uh, but with Flame Tongue here, you can clear Totem Golem. Potentially. I mean... The it is pretty solid. Oh, and that, yeah, the the healing totem, that's healing totem, everything. Healing totem is very good here. It's gonna the zombie child still can trade into it, but uh, it's pretty annoying. Other, otherwise, you know, can't kill it too easily. Can dog. But yeah, this game is just completely back and forth. To be expected of a shaman mirror, obviously. But uh, dog, what could he be thinking here? Is he? He looks like he might be wanting to attack the flame tongue totem. Wouldn't you just kill the totem golem right now? It's tough. It really is. I think it's really just hard, hard to tell. I think you may, maybe it may have gone wow, for the right play. Wow, that is a huge draw right is now. Everything though, but it, it, this matchup seems to be going around who gets the storm and how good the storms are. And Kimmy's storm was strong, but 
they seem to be about the same. You kill small minions and you finish up lost up. That's what happened for both players now. Interestingly enough, you could use the uh, Wrath of Air totem to kill off the Stoneclaw totem, and then Argus, both the Flame Tongue and the Wrath of Air. Mm -hmm. um, looks like he's just going to go for the uh, for the Argus on both totems. And uh, yeah, going to get a, some damage onto the Haunted Creeper, realizing it's just going to heal back up. And Dog now hoping or wishing that he had the Lightning Storm from way back. Oh, gets it though. Picks up the lightning storm. Will he get the spell damage totem? Gets the spell damage totem. Oh, Gonna no, guarantee no, clear no. everything on the right side. Let's see if he rolls high in his Azure Drake. Doesn't really matter too much because he can trade into it. And that is absolutely huge. Kimmy only has a bloodless in hand. Uh, picks up a Pharaoh's Words, which is pretty good for him. One of the not actually, bad, yeah. yeah, not one of the better draws actually. But um, I mean, if Dog can continually clear the board of Kimmy, the bloodless could be a dead card. It's sure, This is. <laughs> What a crazy game. Sweater is not bad here at all. Does he get the totem, uh, the taunt totem here? He does get the taunt totem. Oh my god. What is going on here? <sighs> totem wow. golem, not bad, but not as good as the uh, Paladin Sweater. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the Paladin Sweater just trades into it and comes back again. Uh, Kimi looks like he's Nothing to fear now, yeah. I mean, he's he had both storms, so nothing to fear now from Dog. The healing totem healing up Kimi's wolf here. That and a fire huge, elemental! Though. Oh my god, is Dog running away with this? Absolutely massive. I mean, to be fair, Dog has the more dense deck, so this is to be expected coming out from his deck. And, uh, I mean, he was dealing with mediocre draws the entire game, finally is able to pick up something that can that he can use. And Kimmy, again, with this dead bloodlust in hand, can only deal six if he wanted to. Dog, let's see what he gets Me? out of this totem. Gets a taunt totem once <laughs> more. <laughs> And a Trog. Uh, I think I though to consider, I mean, if Dog hadn't got the uh, Lightning Storm value or not, he would have just been dead to Bloodlust. Right, yeah, definitely. I wonder so... if Kimmy is, is thinking that Dog may have Bloodlust, but I think at this point, Dog may be considering just actually healing his face. Yeah, I think that's the only way you die, right, if it's Bloodlust. And the thing is, Dog has seen this card stuck in Kimmy's hand the entire time. He has to believe it's something like Bloodlust or maybe his own intestinal healing. And, um, yeah, it looks like he finally goes for the healing in order to, to help him out here. Big Game Hunter not going to lose to the Defender of Argus. I believe he went for his face, right? Not onto the, the Shredder. Yeah, just go for the so, face. Yeah. And, um, yeah, going to be a trade here. Will it be something crazy? Nope. Just the Tiny Knight of Evil. And Kimmy is on his last legs. I don't know what he can do here. Yeah, it's it's a rough situation because the next totem is likely to be a healing totem. I mean, with Alec here now. Yeah, he's probably just going to use it here to uh, do some trades. He can even, um, yeah, just take out this shredder. Even if we were Doomsayer, he'd be able to clear it out. And uh, just has to, you know, do some house cleaning, decide which is the best trades. The worst thing that could happen for Dog here is the second Lightning Storm coming out from Kimmy. I think we've seen two from Dog, but only one from Kimmy so far. And obviously Dog true. doesn't know for sure what kind of, uh, or what he could be running. And, I mean, for all Dog knows, that card in Kimmy's hand could be Lightning Storm. There hasn't been a great use for Lightning Storm thus far, I don't believe. If you're, if you're, uh... From Dog's vantage point, but it looks like he's gonna he needs the lightning up. storm, yeah. lightning storm, and a a uh, wrath of air totem here. Yeah. All right. So how much damage does Dog have? Looks like Kimmy's not even gonna let us count, and he's going to concede. Dog is going to take the series three games to one, and that puts him at two series to one as far as his overall score goes. And uh, his game score is going to be plus two because of that last win right here. So Dog in an excellent position to move on. Kimmy, on the other hand, is eliminated 0 and 3 on the day. And uh, does that mean that Dog guaranteed moves on? Because Tice, um, Tice will need to win two games. He can Tice can take a a well. But Tice will just need to win overall, and then he's through. Mm. If Tice wins, uh, yeah, he, Tice will need to win. Yeah, if Tyus wins, he's through. If yeah. Tyus loses, uh, he will need to lose at least. He will need to win at least one game. I think it's, it's looking like yeah. Right. So yeah, Bra Rose. He is currently at uh, five and five as far as game score is concerned, 
And uh, as for Dog to move on, Bra Rose. If Bra Rose wins three games to one, then they would be tied. So we might have to look at that situation uh, at a future date. But uh, in any case, we are going to go to break. When we come back, we will have Tice versus Bra Rose to finally figure this group out. <laughs> 